Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use cron expressions to schedule and trigger our lambda functions on a consistent and scheduled basis using an event bridge rule. Let's get into it. Before we jump into using the CDK to actually set up our cron expression and scheduling our lambda functions, let's just take a minute to explore why we would want to do such a thing. There might come a time when you need to perform regular and scheduled actions against a database, for example. This might be to check that a user's licenses are valid or to check that a user has been updated for that day's worth of data. And you could do this manually using the dashboard, which would be quite repetitive, or using the CLI as well, again, quite repetitive. And there's also a high chance of error if you were to become ill and miss a day, or you ran it slightly late, people would get a day late. So you don't want to rely on this manual input. This is where cron expressions can come in. We can set up a simple rule on event bridge that says that at 9 a.m. every day or 10 a.m. every day, whenever you want it, it will run this trigger, which will then cause your Lambda function to run. And then the action would be performed with no manual input from you. So why we're going to be using cron expressions in this video is by no means going to be an extensive deep dive into how they work and the intricacies about them. I'm going to be linking a playground that you can use below, which explains a bit more about them and also a way you can experiment just to get a better understanding of them. But cron expressions in general are small expressions that we can use to refer to an individual or recurring piece of time. As an example, you could use 5, 4, star, star, star as a cron expression to refer to 4 or 5 a.m. every day. We're going to be using a similar kind of expression in our tutorial, but and I'll explain that when I get to it, but it will refer to every five minutes going forward. So you'll see that as we explain it. So now we have a better understanding of what we're going to be doing in this tutorial along with what cron expressions are. Let's jump into the tutorial part of this video and actually build a Lambda function that's scheduled with a cron job using the AWS CDK and TypeScript. Let's get into it. So for this tutorial, you can either use an existing CDK project or you can create a brand new one. I'm going to be using a brand new one which I've just bootstrapped and opened in VS Code. So let's get into this. The first thing you'll want to do is to create our new Lambda function. So let's create that by creating a new folder in the root directory called resources. And then inside that, we're going to create a new one called lambdas. And this is where we're going to store our lambda function. It's just going to be a very basic lambda function for this tutorial, as we don't need to do anything special in it. It's just the fact that we have a lambda function that we can schedule. So we're going to call this hello world.ts, just because it's a very basic example. And then we're going to export our lambda function, which is just going to be a very basic function, which just console logs. Hello. Like I said, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. This is more than enough for what we need in this tutorial. So now we've written our Lambda function, we now just need to define it in our stack. So head over to your stack definition file inside your lib directory, which I've got open here. And the first thing we're going to do is define our new Lambda function that we just wrote a moment ago. So to do that, we're going to do const hello world Lambda, and we're going to ignore GitHub Copilot's suggestion there. We're going to do new node.js function. We're going to pass in this hello world handle. And then we're going to pass in some options to it. The first one being the runtime that we're going to use, which we're going to use runtime, and we're going to use Node.js 16. We're then going to point into the entry, which is the correct part here. So we point to our resources directory, then lambdas, and then to the hello world function that we wrote a moment ago. We're then going to define handler and reference that to handler. That then lines up with the function that we're exporting from our lambda file here. The final thing that we need to do is define the timeout for our function. So we're just going to define that as duration 30 seconds, which is more than enough for this function to run. And that, that concludes the defining of our Lambda function. So now what we want to do is define the actual rule that's going to trigger this on event bridge. This is where the cron expression is going to come in. So to do that, we're going to do const rule equals new rule, import that in from AWS events. We're then going to pass in the reference to this again, along with the ID rule. And then we're going to pass in some options, which is going to be schedule. And then we're going to use, which we're going to import the schedule from AWS events. And then we're going to use cron. And then inside the cron, we're going to pass some more options. And it's going to be minute. And then we're going to pass in star slash five. This refers to, as we mentioned earlier, the every five minutes. So every five minutes, this event bridge rule is going to get triggered and then we're now going to conclude that by pointing that rule at a target. So every five minutes the rule gets triggered and then that points to a target and that target gets invoked. As you can probably guess, the target is going to be the Lambda function. So as GitHub Copilot has lovingly suggested here, we're just going to accept that suggestion and we're just going to import the Lambda function here. 
from AWS Events Targets. There's one more thing we need to do before we deploy it, and that is to install ES Build. Because we're using the Node.js construct for our Lambda function, we have to have ES Build installed so that it can compile it properly. So let's just open up our terminal and then do npm i ES Build. Wait for that to install. And with that installed, we can now run CDK deploy to deploy our function. So accept any changes that come through on that. And then we'll just wait for that to deploy. So as you can see, the CDK stack has just finished deploying. So the next steps is to head over to your AWS dashboard and more specifically into the Lambda page. So then we can check out our Lambda function. As you can see, mine's deployed here. And then what we're gonna do is head over to the monitor tab and then under logs. So there's nothing showing right now because it hasn't triggered, but we're gonna leave it 10 minutes and then we're gonna come back in 10, 15 minutes time. And hopefully we should have a few logs sitting here ready for us to have a look at. What we'd be expecting to see is say in 15 minutes time, have two or three logs there, which all just print out hello world, which is what the function did. If that's the case, then we know we've been successful. So let's fast forward 10, 15 minutes, make sure it's all ran successfully and I'll see you then. So we've just waited 10, 15 minutes for our Lambda function to be triggered a couple of times. Let's check it out and see what we've got. So first thing, we're just gonna refresh it to make sure new, new logs have been populated. And as you can see here, we've had one CloudWatch logs logged under our Lambda function. This is actually worth investigating a bit further, which we'll do now by clicking on the log stream link here. So although the Lambda reports just one invocation, if you check out the log, we actually have two. This is because CloudWatch and Lambda sometimes couple closely occurring events into one log group or one log event so that we don't have multiple entries. But as you can see here, it was triggered twice, one at 8.50 and one at 8.55. So every five minutes it has been triggered successfully, which is exactly what we wanted from our stack. So this means everything's working fine, our cron expression's working perfectly as intended. And that now brings us to the end of the project. We've inspected our logs, we know the cron expression's working as intended. So now we can destroy the stack if we no longer want it. Obviously you're free to keep it if you would like to. If you're like me, however, and don't want the stack lingering around in your AWS account, as an example project, then head back into your terminal and then just do CDK destroy. Just accept the prompt and then once this command finishes, it will destroy all of the resources just being deployed to your AWS account so you won't have anything lingering around such as the Lambda function or the cron expression rule, just to make sure you're not being billed for anything you're not using if you're outside of the free allowance or free project that AWS gives you. And with the successful deployment of our CDK stack and the triggering of the Lambda on a schedule, that's brought us to the end of the tutorial. In this tutorial, we've looked at how and why we should trigger Lambda functions on a recurring basis using cron expressions and event bridge rules all deployed by the CDK and TypeScript. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you'd like to see the full example code for this project, then make sure to head down to the GitHub down below, which contains all of the CDK tutorial projects that I've done on both here and on my blog. So once again, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and until next time, thank you for watching.